This video was produced by Alabama View, a member state of the America View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research. Funded by United States Geological Society, or USGS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsements. Hello, viewers. Today we will learn about the different indices calculated to understand and analyze various information from satellite images. Before getting into today's topic, let's try to understand why it is important to know about different landscapes like vegetation, water, and built up area of our environment. Landscapes around us are changing every day. Natural surfaces and forests give way to houses, office buildings, croplands, highways, and parking lots. To know the extent, rate, and pattern of change, we need an easy way to measure the extent. Remote sensing provides an easy way to map different landscapes of our environment using the bands of satellite images through employing some algorithms. The output of employing the methods to measure distinctive landscapes are often called indices. So, what are these indices? Indices are measures which help in determining the health of vegetation, the growth of a city, and the conversion of a wetland to a forest land, etc. Simply saying, image indices are images that are made of computing number of bands of satellite images. We have talked about remote sensing and satellite images in our last video. From that video, we know that satellite remote sensing is based on remotely sensed satellite images. These satellite images have a number of bands. Each band provides a record of the amount of energy reflected in a specific wavelength, which is then used to determine the type of surface from which the energy is reflected. The reflectance of light changes with contents of the object. Based on this idea, various algorithms and methods have been established to measure distinctive landscape types which we technically call indices. These images emphasize a specific phenomenon that is present, making the target features and the degree of those features more visible and distinguishable. For instance, a vegetation index will show healthy vegetation as bright in the index image, and unhealthy vegetation darker, and barren terrain as completely dark. So, why do we need indices? Different indices help us with the acquisition of land cover, landscapes, and ecological and aquatic information from satellite and drone data through the analysis of multi- or hyperspectral imagery bands. So, we can easily determine our desired land cover distribution in a large area. For example, you want to know the cropping pattern distribution of an area of 2,500 square miles. If you want to do that by survey, it will cost a lot of money and time. If you use satellite images and do the vegetation indices, you can easily measure the cropping pattern and distribution with minimal cost of time and money. So, what are all the different indices? Among different indices analyzed from satellite images, some popular indices are vegetation and soil indices, water indices, and landscape indices. Different indices help categorize different land classifications, such as vegetation, mining, forest, bare soil, pasture, water surfaces, and industrial. There are various types of vegetation and soil indices, such as Modified Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, Perpendicular Vegetation Index, and Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index. Among all of the above indices, NDVI is the most popular and widely used, so let's talk about it. We have already come to know what are the uses of vegetation indices. But do you know what the theory is behind measuring NDVI indices? It's very simple. We know that photosynthesis or the making of food for trees requires water and carbon dioxide and light. Leaves reflect near infrared light or NIR, 
when sunlight hits onto them. So, a healthy plant with good photosynthesis activity can be analyzed by comparing NIR with visible red light. Unhealthy vegetation will reflect more visible light and less NIR. Healthy vegetation will absorb most of the visible light falling onto it. Originally developed by NASA, the NDVI index is widely used based on this theory. The NDVI values range between 0 and 1 due to the normalization procedure. Very low values of NDVI, negative 1 to 0, correspond to dead plants and inanimate objects. Unhealthy plant and moderate healthy plants have a NDVI value between 0 and 0 0.66. Tree canopies and healthy vegetation like forests provide NDVI values close to 1. The above figure shows typical NDVI values for different ecosystems. It explains how we can understand different types of forest or canopies by visualizing values of NDVI. This figure shows the NDVI map of Auburn University. Now, let's talk about another popular and very useful indice, water indices. Do you know when do we use them? Basically, water index is widely used when you want to remotely identify the water content in a large area. During floods and other natural disasters, followed by landscapes submerged by water, it becomes very important to find out places, such as houses and agricultural land, flooded by water. Several types of water indices are Normalized Difference Snow Index Modified Normalized Difference Water Index Normalized Difference Moisture Index Among different water indices, MNDWI is more accurate and mostly used. But how is this MNDWI produced? The Modified Normalized Difference Water Index uses green and shortwave infrared bands, or SWIR, for the enhancement of open water features. When sunlight hits onto any water body, they reflect energy within green and SWIR band wavelengths due to the properties of the water. MNDWI also diminishes built-up area features that are often correlated with open water and other indices. Here, the value ranges also range from negative 1 to 1. The higher values close to 1 represent greater water content in that landscape and lower values close to negative 1 represent less amount of water content. Because MNDWI is sensitive to the water content of plants as well as bodies of water, it is often used for drought monitoring recording yield reductions, reservoir discharge, and the lowering of groundwater levels. In MNDWI, values for water bodies are larger. Vegetation has much smaller values, which makes distinguishing between vegetation and water bodies easier. Built-up features have positive values between 0 and 0 0.2. There are also some landscape indices. Some examples are burn area index, normalized burn ratio index, and normalized difference built up index. Let's talk about NDBI. Among other landscape indices, NDBI is very widely used. So what are the uses of it? Mostly applications of NDBI are watershed runoff predictions and land use planning. NDBI shows the paved or impervious areas, so it becomes easy to design the route of watershed runoff in any area. So, how is NDBI made? The normalized difference built up index uses the near infrared and shortwave infrared bands to emphasize man made built up areas. It is principally a ratio based to mitigate the effects of terrain illumination differences as well as atmospheric effects. It helps to detect the urban built up areas automatically. It analyzes the reflectance within the range of those two bands. The value ranges from negative one to one. The higher value, one, 
represents the built up areas or impervious areas like roads, concrete, and steel structures and any other landscape which are not natural. The lower value, negative one, represents the more natural and less pervious surfaces. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also be sure to check out our other videos if you're interested in remote sensing and its wide variety of applications.